begin. When we talk about site analysis, it's uh, basically uh, trying to understand what your site is all about. So we have to define what site analysis is for, for us to understand. It's basically gathering, analyzing, and synthesizing information about the site and interpret how it will influence both the building and the site. Site analysis is an investigation uh, of the site. So you want to find out uh, anything and everything about the site where you're going to build. You also want to do it in a, in a manner where the context is uh, given importance. When you say contextual study, it means you're trying to find out everything about that locality. So it's isolated in that location. It also reveals the site's feasibility. So it's basically a go and no go in terms of project. Uh, it will tell you the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that your design might encounter. It will help you establish parameters in designing the build. Now, you have to do site analysis in certain sequences. Number one is to gather information. This is your uh, research part. Gathering information may require you to go to the site or you can just do a desktop study where you will just trying to get, you'll be trying to get information that's available over the internet, uh, books, using your computer and what, whatever. And then after that, you do the analysis part. Analysis is um, you're going to use your uh, architectural concepts like uh, tropical design, math, sciences to figure out what's going on in your site. And finally, you synthesize. When you say synthesize, is you create solutions isolating problems based on the analysis that you have done. comes in two forms. Number one is hard data. Datas are the location. Basically, these are the things that you cannot, um, you cannot change. It's the dimensions of the site the climate where it's located. Of course, depending on where your site is located, the climate changes as well. The contours, uh, if your uh, site is rolling, if it's flat, you cannot really change it. So we're still talking about the We have the soft data. Soft data are information that are secondary, like the views. Okay? You have the neighborhood. These are all uh, related to your site, but are all secondary. Site activities, like during the weekend, is there a, is a weekend market near your place? Uh, does traffic affect your, um, your site in certain times of the day, etc.? And then, of course, the noise. You don't have noise all throughout the day. So, for example, if your site is beside a factory, it may be noisy from a certain hour of the day and then quiet at night. Now, when we talk about data, there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis. Uh, they are all categorized by Edward T. White in his book, Site Analysis. Uh, it's location, neighborhood, size and zoning, legal, natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. Let's start with location. Location is where your site is positioned or where it is in reference to other locations on a map. Uh, may it be a, a local vicinity map, uh, can be a city map, or even a global map, depending on what type of project you are working on. 
location uh, details road names addresses major landmarks it also needs to be in in a current context like for example is it near existing parking buildings or other buildings uh, is it near open spaces etc now when we talk about data there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis. Uh, they are all categorized by Edward T. White in his book, Site Analysis. Uh, it's location, neighborhood, size and zoning, legal, natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. Next, we have neighborhood. Neighborhood is the immediate surrounding of the site, including data on zoning and building and other impacts on your project. It may include, the, of course, the vicinity map showing uh, the location of the site in re relation to the neighborhood or a city map uh, showing distances with travel times, um, traffic information, etc. Studies the existing and proposed buildings in and around the location. Like for example, here we have um, we have existing buildings here that is highlighted on our basic site analysis sketch that can influence the project you are working on what are these uh, what are the conditions of these buildings are they old are they new are they modern are they historical is there any open spaces that you can use uh, or if th there are any open spaces what are they used for are they used for parking are they used for weekend markets are they used for gatherings are there any activities in the vicinity that may create strong vehicular or pedestrian traffic? Uh, for example, uh, there, there are certain areas in a city where during weekends, the open spaces are converted into markets. So you have to uh, take a look at that as well. You, you should also study the existing vehicle movement. Is it one-way traffic, for example? What are the patterns, the major and minor roads, the public transportation routes, etc. Street lighting and furniture, are there any available? Uh, is it right for your project? Are you going to utilize them as part of your exterior landscape? So all of these should be included in your neighborhood context. You also have to study the vernacular context in terms of materials, architectural features, Fenestrations are the windows, doors, the landscaping, parking, and of course the building heights. You don't want to put your building out of scale or um, out of theme or is that what you're, you're intending to do. Depending on what you really want to do for your building, you have to have all of this information ready. Are there any... Uh, historical buildings nearby or buildings of significance are you beside a monument are you beside a historical building are you going to use it uh, use it as part of your design etc uh, you should study the sun and shade patterns during different times of the year for example um, is the building beside you covering you during the afternoon uh, is it happening every day of the year or just during summer are the buildings close together? Is it very dense? It will give you an idea if you want to open up new spaces or use the existing spaces that you already have. You also need to study the building, uh, the building context. What style, period, state of repair are the surrounding buildings? Is it a historical heritage conservation area? Uh, are you going to need to uh, 
be in a certain type of theme to be able to build a, a, a building beside it will you will your design need to reflect the existing style or you want to contrast it etc what are the surfaces and materials around the site it's also very important now when we talk about data there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis. Uh, they are all categorized by Edward T. White in his book, Site Analysis. Uh, it's location, neighborhood, size and zoning, legal, natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. Now we go to size. Now size and zoning are the dimensional considerations such as the lot boundaries, easements, height restrictions, setbacks for your site area or access with any further plans. Like for example, is there going to be a road widening in the future? These documents all the dimensional aspects of the site including the lot boundaries, uh, what type of zoning are you in, that which declares what type of building heights is required, what type of density, what even what type of building you can actually build on that property. Basically, on the site boundary and dimensions with reference to other buildings or from the road, any rights of way that you need to, to to produce any easements or locations of dimensions that you need to categorize, etc. Is it a buildable area or how much of your site is a buildable area? What is the access to the site? Are there any car parking, bus routes, train stations, cycle routes, pedestrian walkways that you need to be able to use it uh, to your advantage? And, and of course, you have to also think about the access during construction. If you're going to build on an island, then all of your materials have to be ferried into the site uh, using, uh, using uh, uh, the traditional banka or, or, or tugboats. So that, uh, that gives a big impact on your Now, when we talk about data, there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis. Uh, they are all categorized by Edward T. White in his book, Site Analysis. Uh, it's location, neighborhood, size and zoning, legal, natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. Now, when it comes to the basically your uh, ownership restrictions, covenants, when you say covenants, they are the agreements, uh, council related information, future, uh, future urban development plans. It's summed up in the National Building Code of the Philippines. Uh, the rights of ways, rights of access, town and country planning restrictions, history, etc. Once you be you you get to study the National Building Code and other related codes, such as the Fire Code, Plumbing Code, Water Code, DNR, um, Executive Orders, these all comprise the legal uh, data that you need to compile for your project. Development controls is basically the summary of everything from the setbacks to the building heights to the number of occupant per square meter, the number of parking spaces you need to have in terms of uh, slots per square meter of type of area, uh, the number of floors that's possible, 
they are all tied up into one uh, huge document. Uh, my, my class in Design 9, I taught them how to prepare development controls for the thesis project. I will, I will try to make another uh, video about that uh, in, the, in the coming days and um, to supplement this one. And hopefully you'll, you'll find it more uh, informative. Now when we talk about data, there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis. Uh, they are all categorized by Edward T. White in his book, Site Analysis. Uh, it's location, neighborhood, size and zoning, legal, natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. The natural features. natural features are the actual features of the site, such as trees, rocks, the topography, rivers, ponds, drainage patterns, and anything else that is related to the environmental aspects, the physical environment. Uh, the topography of the site, including the valleys, the ridges, the slopes are very important. Of course, the vegetation, the landscaping that's already there, greeneries, shrubs, trees, open spaces, the site levels, elevations within the site, uh, how will this affect your design process? How does the site drainage work? Are you inside a valley? Are you on top of a hill, etc.? Of course, uh, in terms of construction, you will also need to find out the different types of soil uh, that you have. Now, when we talk about data, there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis. Uh, they are all categorized by Edward T. White in his book, Site Analysis. Uh, it's location, neighborhood, size and zoning, legal, natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. Next would be the built environment. The environment deals with primarily the man-made features existing within your site. They may be buildings, walls, surrounding vernacular elements, materials, landscaping in scale, but they are all man-made, meaning you will have to figure out how the other architecture or the other man-made things affect your site in terms of the other elements that you have on your site. So you, you ask yourself, what was the previous use of the site? So um, in my uh, previous class, uh, I had them design a resort on an island in Antique. It's called Semirara Island. It was previously a coal mine, a coal pit mine. And then they changed the use and converted it into a resort. So how does that affect your site in terms of the building type that you're going to put in there? Would there be any contamination, any concerns? Are there existing buildings on the site? What is the state of their repair? Is, is there any sign of subsidence or settlement damage? Uh, in, in, in some cases, when you have a new site that was uh, that was previously used, for example, as a landfill, when you put a building on top of it, it usually settles down until the, the soil underneath is compacted. Uh, the, it's, a, it's a big issue in, in, in terms of the stability of the building and is also affected in terms of flooding. Are there any existing buildings as part of the project? Any walls, retaining walls on the site or other built items? Sometimes in your projects, you might encounter that 
you have this big site but on one side of it there's a huge firewall because there's a factory beside it so how do you address that you cannot use that part of the the site anymore for anything else because there's actually a firewall uh, by your neighbor so how, how does that address uh, your site in terms of its viability now when we talk about data there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis uh, they are all categorized by Edward T white in his book site analysis uh, its location neighborhood size and zoning legal natural features the built environment circulation utilities sensory human and culture and of course climate so let's check one first let's do location Let's move to uh, circulation. Circulation or vehicle and pedestrian movements in, through, and around the site. Consider the timing of these movements and duration of the heavier patterns. Future traffic and road development should also be considered. Okay, when you do circulation, sometimes I see the students, they just do the, the arrows, the directional ones. But you also need to figure out uh, are there any intersections that create the most traffic uh, when you have traffic in 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 fronting your lot you will have noise so basically these are the items that you need to be be figuring out ahead of designing your building circulation for example, how do visitors, pedestrian traffic to or near the site flows around it? When you have a site and you have a project, you have different types of circulation. You have pedestrian and you have vehicular. In vehicular, sometimes you have uh, ve vehicles coming, uh, coming, going because of visitors or users. But there are also vehicles that are bigger ones for utilities, for maintenance. In the same in the same way, uh, pedestrian traffic it creates different types of pedestrian traffic. Are there the users of the building? Are there, for example, in hospitals? Are there the visitors? Are they the the doctors? Are they the staff? Are they are they the uh, utilities? Um, you have to identify how all of these come in and out and move through your site. The accessibility is very important because it's for um, for the persons with disability. How are they able to access your site? Uh, in the Philippines, it's it's required that all buildings have PWD access. So you have to figure out how uh, these these people travel from the sidewalk and access your site, or are there no sidewalk access so you have to create one etc does the existing pedestrian movement need to be preserved or you are are, are you going what is the vehicle peak loads and when so during rush hour are there uh, traffic jams created near your site or immediately in front of your site is public transport close are there any buses bus stops that you can use or you need to uh, uh, redesign your site to to be able to release some pressure off of it the travel time to walk across the site you can easily do this using google maps you can either use a vehicle or walk so you know how long it takes for example if you're designing um, say a university complex you put your dormitories on the periphery of the building how long does it take for the student to walk from the dormitory to the middle of your site so that's very now when we talk about data there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis uh, they are all categorized by edward t white in his book site analysis uh, its location neighborhood size and zoning legal 
natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. Now utilities. Utilities determine whether uh, there are water, electricity, data, telephone, sewer, and other services connected or available to your land, to your site. You have to... Without utilities, your building cannot function and you may have to create your own. So where are the location of the services like electricity, gas, water, sewer, telephone? Are there connecti con connectivities? near or available to your site uh, location of the power poles and provisions in 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 some projects you will see that there are no power lines because all of them are underground so are you going to go to do your utilities underground or overhead how about the drainage and sanitation provisions are you going to build your own sewer in your site or are you going to tap into the sewer of the city or is it provided now, when we talk about data, there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis. Uh, they are all categorized by Edward T. White in his book, Site Analysis. Uh, it's location, neighborhood, size and zoning, legal, natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. Now when we talk about sense, these are the, the, the things that you smell, see, hear, and feel. This addresses the visual, audible, and tactile aspects of the site, such as the views, noise, and so on. These again should be considered in time frames and in a positive, uh, positive or negative factor that can be attributed to that condition. So uh, in my diagram here, you have to consider everything in terms of the sensory so you know where to put which, uh, what areas where inside your site. If you're trying to design a hospital, of course you want your your wards and your your beds to be away from the noise and and but but are actually opening up into green and um, well ventilated spaces so you have to to figure out where they, these are in 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 your uh, the views are the best views to and from the side of course sometimes in your projects you cannot visualize the views but when you talk about views, it's not just about the views when you are in the site. The views also talk about once you're trying to approach. If you've been to uh, to to Quezon City, to the University of the Philippines, when you go inside towards the university, you'll go to the through the University Avenue, which is actually a very long avenue that terminates into a Y. So you will have a good view of the administration building of Quezon Hall and the oblation statue. So that's, uh, that's basically a, a view, a sensory aspect of the design. What are the views? Uh, what what the, the views are? Mark out the positive and negative views. So ano ba siya? Are, are there any, uh, uh, let's say, your site is near... Uh, a factory are there any unsightly things that uh, you can see during your approach to your site or you do you need to cover some things uh, etc which is the most likely feature aspect sometimes when when you're in your your you're studying the sensory aspects you cannot really capitalize on all of the views so you have to list them in order of importance 
look at the views towards the site from the different approaches to see how the site would be seen when drawing near to the site. Again, my example a while ago, uh, even the travel from outside your site going in is actually a good exercise of, of, sensory, of view sensories. It gives you a vista how the approach is. So you, you, you have to imagine how, how it would look like. Are there any outdoor pollutions or any uh, changes in the views long term? Is there a facility that creates smoke? Now, when we talk about data, there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis. Uh, they are all categorized by Edward T. White in his book, Site Analysis. Uh, it's location, neighborhood, size and zoning, legal, natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. All of this you have to figure out and list down. Now we go to human Human culture is basically the uh, sociological aspect of your site analysis. The cultural, psychological, behavioral, behavioral and sociological aspects of the surrounding neighborhood is very important. Activities and patterns, density, population, ethnic patterns, employment, income, values, and so on. Um, I regularly joke with my uh, fourth year students, I keep on asking them, when you talk about human and culture, it's basically like talking about if you are in Marawi, are you going to build a Catholic church or a mosque? So you have to consider the culture within that city, even the religion. Is it allowed for you to put a building like that? So. Uh, it's very important to study the human and cultural aspect. What are the negative neighborhood issues uh, such as vandalism? Are there anything there? So when you talk about vandalism, that means if you're going to put some hardscape elements on your design, are they resilient to, let's say, graffitis? Or are you going to allow them to paint on your walls? So that's also one aspect of that. What are the attitudes toward the sites in potential to build? Are, are they willing? Are, are, are the neighborhood, is the neighborhood happy that you're going to build something like that? Um, in, in terms of, let's say, for example, uh, you're going to build a, a nuclear reactor or a power plant. Is, the, is your site uh, in terms of the neighborhood around it, are they going to welcome the power plant or are they going to resist that that is also very important what are the general neighborhood attitudes towards the area uh, is it is it a fun place a happy place is it a sad place is it a flooded place etc Now we also have to look at the population density surrounding the area. Is it very dense? It's, is, it, uh, is population very scarce? The size, the ethnic patterns, employment, recreation activities, etc. When we talk about all of these, they, they are all de demographic data that you can uh, get from the internet such as the NEDA. Uh, you also have data uh, available in other government agencies. Now when we talk about data, there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis. Uh, they are all categorized by Edward T. White in his book, Site Analysis. Uh, it's location, neighborhood, size and zoning, legal, natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, 
climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. Now, climate. This is one of the 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 longest part to assess a lot. This it's basically also being taught in my tropical design class. But uh, for this for this video, for this subject, we'll just browse through them. So climate deals with all climatic information such as rainfall, snowfall, wind directions, temperatures, sun path, and all considered during different times of the year. Um, I all, always tell my students that in tropical design, the sun path is not just one. There are, there are basically two paths during the year, one during the summer, one during the winter solstice. So these are different uh, two different uh, heights of the sun throughout the year. Now, climate conditions of the site area. These, this is done both uh, in a micro and macro context, depending on the size of your project. Uh, as you can see here in my diagram, we have here two sun paths that creates two different noons. Okay, one is this, and another is this. Okay, so it's it's usually done in terms of a stereographic sun path chart where you'll put it over your site and determine the angles and the al altitudes of the sun throughout the day and throughout the year the lower the lower uh, angles are during the december 21 that's where the lowest angle of the sun is and june 21 is where the sa the the highest angle is that means when the sun is at its highest angle it's actually almost vertical to your site so it's almost 90 degrees and if the angle is low it's it it means that uh, the sun is is about near or uh, if not very close to the horizon that creates shadows differently so if you have the sun above you you have a, a very short shadow if you're if the sun is uh, very near the horizon you'll have a longer shadow so you have to figure out the sun paths and angles from the stereographic sun path chart is the area susceptible to flooding? Is it considered a flood risk area? There are maps that are available online for different cities. These are called geohazard maps where you have the flooding maps uh, available to you. I'll show some examples later. The orientation, of course, please do not forget this. This is very important. Without the orientation, you would not know how your sun is orientated in terms of north. So if you don't get this right, you'll get everything else wrong. So that's very important for you to figure out where the north is. The weather and how the weather affects the, the site. Okay. Um, there is a difference between weather and climate. Weather is is something that changes from day to day even within the day the weather changes but when you talk about climate it is something that is constant throughout a span of 30 to 50 years when we say climate you like for example in the philippines we are a tropical climate that means we have only two seasons we have the wet season and then we have the dry season. When we talk about weather, it is the something that gives you an idea of the, the time, uh, the, the, the month of the year. For example, uh, rainy, the rainy seasons are during May, June, July, August, and so on. So these are weathers that can change. Uh, practically every hour or even 
every day but climate is doesn't change actually is your site well shaded or is it exposed uh, you want you want to figure this out because you want to know how best to orient your site your building in terms of your site normally you want to to uh, to orient your building east to west where the longest part of your building faces the south so you want to figure out if it if it's well shaded or not so you can adjust the orientation of your building how does the temperature rainfall and uh, anything else vary throughout the year this this in turn this i showed a couple of graphs in my tropical design where we show that the temperature ranges uh from january up to december so it shows you which is the hottest part of the year or when is the most rainfall throughout the year what are the prevailing wind directions throughout the year first we have two prevailing winds we have the amihan and then the habagat we have the north uh, northeast wind and then we have the southwest winds uh, you have to show this on your site so you know where the winds in general are blowing from okay the sun path throughout the year uh, where the angles uh, throughout the year this this is very important especially if you're trying to use glass materials for your building you want uh, you want shade but you want uh, you want to have a view so you have to balance everything now when we talk about data there are 11 types of categories or uh, elements that you look for in your site analysis uh, they are all categorized by Edward T white in his book site analysis uh, its location neighborhood size and zoning legal natural features, the built environment, circulation, utilities, sensory, human and culture, and of course, climate. So let's check one first. Let's do location. Once you have all of those information, you want to do your analysis. And as architecture students, you want to do your analysis through diagrams. Are, are important because they are the best way to present the data uh, about the different elements that you have just uh, that you just have learned. Like for example, the maps. Uh, the, the sun path diagrams they can all be drawn in in very nice diagrams of course your diagram should of course have orientation and scale to put everything in 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 a perspective it can be sketches it can be CAD 3d models uh, 2d models scale models whatever you're comfortable with it should emphasize clarity it should follow a hierarchy meaning your your presentation of your analysis should have some sort of uh, a storyboard it tells a story about the site and the information can either be isolated or compounded i'll show you some examples later uh, there are certain analysis diagrams that are separate from each other and there are analysis diagrams that are drawn one on top of the other So how do you evaluate your site uh, in terms of these parameters that we have just talked about? Um, the most basic is the street patterns. You can draw it, you can list it down, you put the names. Street patterns are very important. The street section, you can also draw. Uh, how is it related to your site? The scale and hierarchy, the form and space the land use or land use maps typologies neighborhood relationships 
uh, formal state variations, perspective relationships, views, edge conditions, surfaces and materials, natural and man-made structures within. Movement and circulation within and around the site, vehicle versus pedestrian access, public space versus private space, open spaces, history, climates and angles, and sun shadows. Of course, you have to put both negative and positive spaces. We move through negative spaces and we dwell in positive spaces. I, I guess you've seen maps of this that are black and white. The white stuff are the the open spaces the the black ones are the the spaces that are the building so basically we move through the negative spaces which are the white and then we live inside the positive spaces that are black so depending on how you okay so what influences this? Number one is structure and circulation. Of course, the massing as well. Axis, symmetry, scale and proportion, balance, and regulating lines. Added to that, we have light quality, rhythm and repetition, views, geometry, hierarchy, enclosure, space and void relationships. After you do your site analysis, these items actually influence your building in terms of how you're going to respond to these elements. Uh, they are very important in designing your building in terms of the form, shape, density, the type of architecture, and even the, even the heights. Okay, let's, let's go through some examples. Okay, so the best place you can get street information is, of course, of course Google Maps. You have uh, street information from the street. You have the satellite view, which also gives you that. So you can, for example, this. This is already a proximity map, and it's very basic uh in its very basic state it gives you a dimension from for example i'm trying to figure out the distance from this hospital here towards this village here in kanyogan so it gives me a distance of about two kilometers in contrast from this hospital here coming from this place here in near Capitolio, it will take me about 11 minutes drive, uh, which is 4.5 kilometers or a 10 minute drive in an alternate route at 6.7 kilometers. This is also a proximity map with, which gives you traffic, uh, traffic analysis as well. Okay, this is the geohazard map that I was, uh, sorry, this is the land use map that I was talking about earlier. So the land use map use colors uh, to signify uh, the type of use that that area is allowed to have. So we have uh, residential, we have commercial, industrial, uh, we have institutional, and other special use. For example, here, um, the green spaces are the open spaces. The, the purple spaces are the commercial spaces and so on. So if your site is related to one of these, then you can have an idea of where the traffic might be coming from, how many people are coming from there. For example, if you're trying to build a hospital but you're in the middle of an industrial area, you, then you might have a problem and you need to find another site. But if you're trying to build a hospital and you are inside a commercial area, then you have to worry about the traffic, uh, the amount of people that are going to park from their car, uh, their cars. Uh, so you will have to address the issues with the parking. Now this is a geohazard map. It shows you the hazards of flooding, earthquake, 
landslides, etc. So you will have to look into this so you can uh, go go out and do a resilient study of your project. Okay. Now this is an example of a city map. Um, uh, credits to the author. Uh, this is a city map, I think. Um, this is in the Middle East. Uh, it sh uh, she basically shows her area, which is this green area here. That's her site. And she is trying to relate it into this neighborhood. Okay. And the other neighborhoods, she just blacked out. So this already visually gives me an idea of what we're talking about, and it's it's very cool. Okay, another example are from from the same project. She has these circles here that signifies distances of certain elements inside her site. So this green space here, the, I think this is about one and a half kilometers from the from the site. So in this neighborhood here and this green space here from this green space you have a kilometer and a half of people who can actually use this and here is about a kilometer from the center here to the green spaces uh, what does this tell you it gives you the time and distance it gives you uh, it answers how long does it take for uh, this person to walk from this area going into your site so these are very informative maps okay this is the negative and positive map it's basically called figure and ground the white spaces are the roads open spaces and then the black ones are the uh, buildings the more dense the building the darker the color so it gives you an idea that this area here is the densest part of the city compared to the other areas it's very nice okay so this is a compounded map so you have the perspectives here showing the current yeah, showing the current site how it would look uh, how is it how it looks and then showing you the figure and ground again so the buildings are here the roads are the, and the open spaces are there in, in white shows you the road sections building sections etc so basically what uh, the author did is to dissect the site into more manageable spaces using one board so this is a good idea to do okay this one is more of the sensory so it gives uh, the person looking at the, the the site analysis the views that you can you can harvest from the site so you see here it's a three mile corridor the longest linear park so it's here and then they they show a photograph of what it looks like okay so that's all used in your study okay here uh, this is a very good uh, evaluation of the visual quality of the urban enclosure so we're uh, we're talking about this open space in the middle which is a, a, a park or a garden and then what the author did is to put uh, to make studies of the building around it so here you have the uh, medium high the quality of the buildings the mediocre ones so he shaded it out here so for example this building here has high aesthetic value and here as well these are all high aesthetic value which is this one is looking inside the site uh, the other ones like this one is high quality cultural and historical value so when when it comes to designing the site or understanding it they already have a, an, an idea of what the enclosure is for for the project okay 
Now, analysis of the exposition. This, uh, in terms of uh, the accessibility, the corridors, the site views that you have on your site. So, it's very clear cut. The buildings are here. So, basically, what she did was to draw on top of the site plan, the view corridors, the access, um, the main road access, and uh, and including the views so it gives an idea of how to prepare compounded maps okay. yeah, this is another exci um, exciting one uh, it's basically it's four site analysis items in one board so first uh, he mapped out the commercial and tourism areas. Next, he mapped out the cultural areas. Third, the green areas. And then fourth, the residential and facilities area. So, um, sometimes you want to do it like this, all separate. Or sometimes you want to do it like the previous ones. Okay, this one's very nice as well. Uh, they have this one here. Okay. Sometimes uh, people think this is for this, the wind, but not always. In this case, this is for the views. Okay. So this is a good study of the similar presentation techniques that you can use. Here is, I wouldn't say it's complete, but it's a good... Um, it's a good representation of the sun path on top of the major axis. So this red here is the highway. And then superimposed is the sun path during the winter and summer solstices. It's pretty good. And then also, of course, you have the north direction here. North is there, you have the wind directions, etc. Okay. Uh, don't get confused. This is for another, this is not in the Philippines, so the wind direction is different. Okay. This is another one which has, uh, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is a site section. So you have a section of the site. Uh, it shows the different levels of the site, which is also here. This is an axonometric drawing. It's not a perspective. So it's pretty cool. It shows the, the major access, uh, vehicular access to and from the site. Okay, also here in the small map. So it, it depends on you how you want to. Okay, this is... Uh, more for the green spaces the section here is very important because there are levels that's why if you have a very good uh, topography I mean uh, a very exciting one one that is not flat it gives you a lot of exciting things to work on like the site here it's pretty good and then what this one is showing are the different levels, the different types of uh, trees and foliage, even the types of views that you will have in certain points of the uh, inside the site. Okay. Here are the legend of trees and materials that you have available on the site. It's pretty good. So when you talk about that, why does it if affect our building? This is a, the, the most basic example of what site analysis is for in terms of designing your building. For This is an example of site zoning uh, conceptualization initiated by respon response to view. For example, in number one, I, it tells, this is the site here, and it tells us that in front of the site, there is a good view here. So... What the designer is doing, so the space is needing views sewn to edge of the site. So these four areas here, these are the ones that requires the best view. So that's what 
is in front of the site. Now, view is oriented in space joined with circulation. Now, how do you access all of these rooms? Of course, this is just a bubble diagram, but if you add your circulation, he puts a corridor here. See, so all of these spaces are now connected. And then these spaces here in number four, these are the spaces that don't require the good views. So they put it behind the ones that requires the good view. And in number five, how do you enter the private and public space? So here, he enters from here and then exits from here and here. Now, uh, in number six, which is almost the fully developed one, you have here the spaces for expansion, you have the space here for the good views, you have the space here that doesn't require the views, you have this entrance coming into the parking and then flows out here into the other buildings for example, expansion. So this is, this is just because the whole thing was designed around the view. You have a lot of elements to work from, so you want to figure out which one you want to focus on as part of your concept. In this lesson, it's, it's, it came from uh, uh, Edward White's uh, site analysis book. Uh, this is a very old book. It, it was written in 1983. Uh, this is one of the most complete ones that you will ever find published. So I suggest you take a look at them. Um, before we end this session, um, I'll be detailing the other elements uh, in the coming videos so you will have an idea uh, in-depth idea of how to work on these elements in the future but uh, i'll try to do some graphics as well uh, in the future but we'll leave that to your graphics professors for you to for them to help you teach you how to prepare those types of maps uh, but before we end uh,